You want to ask what are the risks involved? How much money is a startup capital? Are you willing to spend 50 to 100K? Um, TP3753 at how do you decide what idea to go for? Okay. Like, that's just like ideas. Okay, so TP360? Okay, TP3753. So what I would do is I would focus on understanding who is already successful in that industry, in that idea. And then I would understand how they got to where they are. And then you gotta understand the existing businesses. I would even reach out and try to, they don't know that you wanna enter into their space. There's already people that are successful in that space and there are people that have failed. You want to understand what is the difference between how they succeeded and how they failed. And you can reach out, email, talk to the founder, find them on LinkedIn, whatever it is. Maybe even reach out and potentially do some work for them for free to learn the business itself. I think that's one of the biggest things that you can do as an advantage is to be able to cultivate a relationship with people that are already successful. Because you can tell me a lot of different ideas. Good ideas are plenty, right? There's so many different, different ideas. This thing is, question I want to ask you is think about what is the difference between a person that's successful with the idea and the person that fails with their idea. I guarantee you, you bring me any idea, I can name one person that's extremely successful with that idea and I can name 99 of people that failed and you never heard about them or you did hear about them in the news. What separates them? You want to understand that gap. Once you understand that gap, you want to reverse engineer it, put it into some tangible things. So what I mean by that, let's say you want to do, what was the product that you said? So lunch boxes, let's say you want, do you really want to get, you ask the question, do you really want to get it from what I know? Do you want to get into the manufacturing side? Do you want to do the, the certification, the security? How are you going to market it? Who's the target audience? Is it moms? Is it dads? Is it children? Obviously not children, they can't make decisions. But who's your target audience? You want to ask what are the risks involved? How much money is the startup capital? Are you willing to spend 50 to 100K or even more or less on starting the business? How are you gonna to sell to the target audience? Are you potentially looking at retail distribution? What are your first three month goal, six month goal, one year goal? Break it down and actually lay out the steps that you're gonna do because there's two things that you wanna do. It doesn't matter what idea you have. Sales, you, got, you need revenue, you need sales, and you need to make sure that once you make the revenue and the sales, how can you sustain that growth and use that capital that you've made to be able to fund the business going forward and really grow it? Because you gotta be effective, you gotta be resourceful. Let's say you start the business, you're making 100K your first year. How are you gonna use that 100K to make 500K the next year? How are you gonna make, use the 500K, once you, if you reach it, to make a million dollars? Five, 10, 50 million, that's how you're gonna build a business. Are you gonna take on investors? Because then that's a whole other angle you gotta consider. Do you wanna answer to the board of directors, to your board of advisors? There's all these different variables you gotta consider. Anyway, I don't wanna overwhelm you. Essentially, just look at who's successful, reach out, talk with them, interview them, you know, help them out, understand the business that you want to get into, and then once you do six months or one year, then maybe if it makes sense for you, venture off to do it on your own because you got to understand the risks that there is when you start leaving a, a job or leaving an internship or whatever because essentially there's a lot of risks, there's a lot of variables. Like every, I'm talking like there's so many people that tell me that you just start a business and you start an idea. Here's a statistic I want to share with you, not to demotivate you, but to empower you to be able to understand what's actually happening, right? 50% of businesses fail in the one year. More than 50%, I think 80% in five years, 96% of businesses fail in 10 years. That means only 4%, not that they're successful, 4% of the businesses are surviving. They just exist, right? They stand there, right? So you want to understand that there's a huge, what happened to the 96%? How did they fail? Why did they fail, right? I can tell you a number of things, right? Cash flow is a big one. They run out of money. So they don't understand how to be resourceful. They don't understand how to leverage their money to build a business, which is financial literacy and also financial leverage and capital business-wise, not even personal finances. And then there's also at the same time, they don't understand product market fit. So whatever they're selling the product or service, they're so focused on their own product or service they're so focused on their own product or service that they don't focus on the target audience and serving the problem or the result. You can watch a lot of my YouTube videos. I keep repeating you know, like a broken uh, noise or a broken uh, sound record, whatever it's called. I keep saying results 
and problems that they want to solve. That's what you want to go for. It's not about your idea. It's not about your product. It's about what your target audience already pays for. And if you can find a differentiating factor to be able to add value and add enough value for them to want to take their hard-earned money out and spend it with your business. That's really the big gap. So I told you a lot of things. I gave you a lot of details, but I really want to give you as broad of an understanding as you can on your ideas. So thanks for watching this video and see you in the next breakthroughs with Benson and the BTS. And make sure you go on bensonsum.com and Digital Marketing University to learn the principles to be able to build a successful business online. One way I can tell you right away is that building a business online is gonna decrease your risk because you will be able to start a business online with less capital, less risk. Of course, 96% still accounts for those online businesses, but at the same time, you're able to reduce the risk slightly when you do it online because you don't have to do a brick and mortar retail store, manufacturing, branding, positioning, marketing. I mean, it's a lot, so there you go. Let me know how things go, comment below, and uh, let me know your ideas, and I'll, after you watch this answer, and then I'll let you know how to approach it. Thanks for watching.